So despite the world ending, my wife was at work today and Bo <laughs> came over and started taking his truck apart. Um, there's some cool stuff happening over here. You guys can't see it. Um, Bo's going to take off this wheel and tire over here and we're going to talk about what we're doing today. We wanted to put in the welded diff, but that's going to be another video, whether it's the next video or a different video. Um, it'll be coming up, putting in the welded diff, and we're going to talk about pinion angle and how to fix it if you're on blocks. All right, so this is what we're taking off, factory drum brakes. Um, what we've got to do is we got to take this drum off. We've got to get all the insides out, and then this backing plate. We got to cut this backing plate off like as close as we can um, to the the hub. the hub. Yeah, there's four bolts under there that we're going to use for the B bandy bracket, and that's what's going to hold the caliper on. So. You didn't tell them what we were doing. Oh, you didn't tell them what we were doing? No, I didn't tell them what we were doing. Oh, hey. <laughs> What's up, losers? <laughs> okay, so what we're doing is we're doing a, uh, a rear disc conversion for the hard body. Um, we got disc up front, we got drums out back. Drums are so hard to deal with. Um, drums grip better, like they break better yeah, than disc brakes. Because there's, there's, there's more surface contact, more friction area. They heat up and um, they don't cool off as good. But they don't cool off as good, and they are just a biatch to service. To change the shoes out on them, all the springs and all that stuff, it's ridiculous. It's dangerous. I, I spoke with a guy a few years ago that lost an eye um, trying to take a spring off a drum brake assembly. I don't know. Maybe he's a moron. I don't know, <laughs> apparently. But uh, that's what we're doing today. So I got a little ahead of myself. We backed up. Now we're going to jump back ahead. So Bo's going to get the drum off right now. Then he's going to get the pads and everything off. Drum comes off super easy. Yeah. As long as it's not frozen on, but we've taken these off before. If it's frozen on, what you do is you take a screw and you, you put a bolt and you run it right into there. And what it does, it pushes against this hub, this hub right here and it pushes the drum right off. It's got two of them right there. Yep. So if you want to push it off equally on either side. And it works real good. It works super good. That's one, one time that um, car engineers got it right. <laughs> the one time. All right, I wear face protection when I'm taking these springs off because I don't want to get shot in the face or anything. <laughs> these springs are real tight right here, but you just push these little round ones down and just twist them on the side. And when they line up, they will come right off. They can be a pain in the butt. They can be a little bit of a pain. Just to get them to line up. You'll get them real close, and then they won't, and it gets annoying. <laughs> There it goes. There's one. It falls apart. The drum does make a pretty decent receptacle to put all your crap in, though, which is nice. There we go. There's two. Basically, just push in and turn, and those come right off. Um, you should be able to, like, get most of this loose right here to be able to pull it over. What I do is I try to take this spring off right here, and usually in the process of taking this spring off, everything kind of falls apart. So, what I do is I grab the spring, and I just pull it out this way, and it comes off like that. Everything just kind of falls apart at that point. Oh, the e-brake cable's in. Oh, oh is it? your kitchen on? Yeah, on the back. Uh, <laughs> back, back pen. Lift the e brake cable out right there, and all this mess. I'm saying this like it's real easy, and it should be, but I'm kind of struggling here. <laughs> it's wedged on something. Yeah, it's totally wedged on something. But, uh, disclaimer you do lose your handbrake by doing this. You won't have a parking brake. You have to keep your truck in park or find some other way to keep your truck from rolling. Keep a wheel chalk with you. Um, if you're doing a hydraulic handbrake and you're running in line, you could you could use a hydraulic handbrake to lock it down. Um, I don't really like that idea, but that's me. All the disc parts are all, parts are off except this valve right here. There's two 10 millimeter bolts on the back. You undo those, this pops off. And after that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the grinder and we're going to cut as close as we can to these four studs right here. 
two studs here, two studs on the bottom that we're using to mount the B-Banny bracket on the back. And we're just going to cut as close as we can all the way down. And you're going to reuse this line. It's the same size on this as it is on the, the Z32 calipers, which is what you're using. You're going to get Z32 rears. Um, and then you get the B-Banny kit, which comes with these brackets. Do you know what the price is on these? The the B Banny kit? It's like one fifty. I don't know. I don't know. I would just tell him to talk to uh, Jason Pope. Yep. So find Jason on Instagram at uh, B Banny Customs. We'll have the link in the description. Um, yeah, the link will be in the description. Uh, we'll have his email on there. You can also go to eBay and if you search like disc brake conversion for D twenty one, it'll come up, yeah, and that's him. An yeah, he's got an eBay store. Maybe we'll try and find that. We'll link that down in the description too. So you guys can go to his eBay store and see his whole catalog. Because he makes a bunch of really cool stuff. And we have a lot of it for the red truck. And a lot of it's already on the white truck. So here's what I did. I made cuts all the way around here. And you should be able to just like, at this point, just kick it off. There it goes. Oops, I got my grinder. Anyway, it comes off, and if you cut it big enough, it should slip off, slip off of the hub fairly easy. And then we just got to cut this uh, this stupid thing off right here. No idea what that weight is for. So Ronnie and Dominic are uh, they're shooting Nerf darts out of the freaking air gun. <laughs> Let me see it. Shoot Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm over here working, slaving away. Anyway, all right, I got the back all cut off. I got that bottom piece cut off, and this is pretty, pretty much what you're left with. Here's the bracket right here. This kind of semicircular part right here is <laughs> is what goes around the uh, around the axle right here. So. You can either mount it like this, so the caliper's on the back, or you can flip it around and mount it like this, so the caliper's on the front. That's what we're going to do right now. Or bow. Bow. What are you going to do? I'm going to put a uh, rotor and a caliper on the back of this truck. Why? So I can stop. Don't do that. So I can stop. <laughs> He's looking down the barrel of a gun. Good never, gun discipline. You never look down the barrel of a gun. Firearm discipline. Nice. <laughs> So Bo's got it all cut up. Yep. Brackets on. Yep. Now the rotor. So the hardest part of all this is either getting your drum off or getting this plate off. <laughs> or if, finding Z32 calipers. Oh yes. For rice. <laughs> not not getting it? raped on Z32 calipers. Right. Also hard. Something's not there. Rotor just slides on like the drum slid off. Oh, what are these? These are Odyssey, Honda Odyssey. Is that right? Passport. 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 They are passport rear rotors. When you uh when you go buy these from uh, um, Jason Pope with B Banny Customs, he tells you everything that you need. He'll tell you years and and models and all that. Everything that you need to be able to 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 hook this up. Yeah, I think they're like 2000 or 2001 is what I got. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and then you get Z32. <laughs> rear calipers. Bo and I both got JDM aluminum rears. Boom. Nissan. What? Yep. Uh, and then they just bolt on. He gives you the hardware. Yep. He gives you everything you need besides the actual brake components. Um, but he gives you everything else you need for the kit. But for getting, uh, for having, you know, a rear disc kit on your hard body, it's totally worth it. I think it's worth it. Let's see here. I mean, not even just for like the performance benefit or the ease of working on benefit but like the baller points i agree you know i mean if who wants to who wants to buy like super dope wheels that are like super open that you can see through and want, yeah. and want to look through and see an old rusted drum exactly i want to see that i want to see that don't bring that to my house but, uh, <laughs> yeah that nut's not quite on it yeah, <laughs> you definitely want to when you're doing this you definitely want to make sure that like you don't get any interference with anything. Where's the... I had that socket over here. I don't really want to snug it up that much. 
have to snug him up. We haven't had any problem with any of his stuff that he's made, except for uh, our faulty installation on my. Yeah, we've had some, some installation <laughs> issues that, that we caused because of the way we put things on. Yeah. We just didn't. We we did it, and we probably didn't think enough about it. But yeah, we just welded it on. We'll go over that. Like we'll go over that. When we uh, we'll we might have another coilover video, or we might have like a complete finished video and yeah. talk about some of the issues we had. Yeah, I'd like to when this truck gets close-ish to being done. Yeah. Um, I guess when we when we finish all our projects, I'd like to do like a heartache video of What's each product, video? like of all the heartaches that we've oh. had. You know. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that would be. Uh... You know, a good, a good and full video. Yeah. <laughs> so we've had some issues here and there. Um, not, not many with the products that we've bought. Just things yeah. that we caused. Yeah, more know? like us. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're our own worst enemy, as they say. But I'm sure everybody's. I'm sure all y'all like that too. Break something, like torch <laughs> something too tight, snap a freaking, snap a freaking stud off in your head. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. <laughs> so oh man, yeah, we've been through some rough stuff. Um, so I have a question for you guys, and comment down below and let us know. But I was thinking about that we should do like a uh, a stable update video, and go over like all the vehicles that we have, things that have left, things that have come, and what we're doing with them. Would y'all like to see? And where they're at? Yeah, basically we just want to. Would you guys even watch something like that? Because we do some videos. Um on some of our other projects and you guys don't watch them but if it has a hard body in it you guys watch the crap out of it <laughs> yeah we do so if we do do that video we'll make sure the thumbnail is a hard body you said doo doo <laughs> <laughs> okay so what are you doing this is something i've got a, i've about. got um just extra paint extra like pad material and paint just right here on the edge these things fit really tight in yeah. here um the um low brake pad signal alarm thing what do we call that it's called a wear indicator a wear indicator <laughs> the wear indicator you have to tear those off because you just you, they just don't feed in from the top if they have the wear indicator yeah i'm not sure I why know, i don't know why that is that's dumb but yeah, uh they do yeah not. if these things are too tight they'll have like a, a little bit of extra like paint where they paint them silver just rub it off and it slides right in super easy just dumb stuff. dumb stuff. It's real easy to put this kit on. It really is. Like I said, the hardest part is cutting off the backing plate, this backing plate. And I guess you can pull the axle out and press it off and or maybe even just hit it with a hammer and get it to come off. But why not just cut it and yeah. then flap disc it clean, you know? Exactly. We just cut them and call them good. Spray them with some cut paint. cut his with the, with the um, what you call it? Plasma cutter. Plasma cutter. <laughs> and I cut mine with a grinder and I don't know, we probably spent the same amount of time cutting them. What are you doing? I'm spoon feeding you words today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Because <laughs> I need it. Where's that camera? Just down on the ground right there. Oh, I'll take a picture of you. You want to shoot? You want to shoot some video? Uh-huh. All right. You shoot. Levi's going to shoot some video. Nice. So, so if you, you have any questions, what? you can, if you have any questions about these kits, you can like message us, email us, whatever. You can also message Jason oh. Pope and I'm sure he'd be glad to answer your you know, any oh. any problems that you have, any questions that you have. But so will we. We've done it. I'm sure he's oh, done it a thousand know. times. But uh yeah. I mean we're pretty much done. We just gotta hook the brake line up and bleed the brakes. It's super easy. What? Nothing you <laughs> <laughs> What a good cameraman. I had to go take care of Levi. Bo's putting the uh, spacers back on, then we're going to bleed the brakes, we're going to put it on the wheels, and it's done. So, basically, buy the kit, buy the rotors, buy the pads, buy the calipers, and then cut the backing plate and bolt them on. That's the, that's the gist of it. We were just talking about how much we paid. What did we decide? We'll say $150 for the kit. Yeah, I think so. Um... And then about 150 to 200 for the calipers, 50 bucks a rotor, and then you need pads, and pads are however much you want to spend. I mean, you can spend 100 dollars on pads. You could probably spend like 20 bucks on pads. So you're gonna spend, you're gonna spend what 400, 450 on this conversion? 
Uh, yeah, 100, 200, 300, 400. Yeah, about 450 bucks. Yep. Um, and the crappiest thing is the most expensive part is the freaking calipers, and you can get them, you can get them for like way cheap from AutoZone and O'Reilly's, but they never have them in stock. So that's. I'm currently looking for brake fluid, and I know I have some. I just have to find it. There it is. I found it. It's over there. Most importantly, after you get all this done, bleed your brakes. Make sure they work. Uh, get some brake fluid. Yeah. And into the middle of the highway. Are <laughs> <laughs> right, you ready? Yep. We're bleeding brakes. We're bleeding brakes. So, we're all done. Dom's gonna move the rocks. Bo's gonna pull it out. We're gonna do a quick walk around. Um, and yeah, we really kind of talked about everything. It's simple. Uh, there's something wrong with Bo's hood. I'm gonna have to fix that for him. Look at that. It looks nice. It looks much better. So, Bo was talking about big open wheels, and there it is. Can you get to see that? You want to see that nasty old rusty drum in there? Yeah, it looks good. It looks real funny because the wheel is smaller than the spacer, <laughs> and the spacer <laughs> is smaller than the like the drum portion yeah. of the brake, <laughs> and then you have the rotor. <laughs> it's funny. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take a white marker, like a white paint pen, uh -huh. and paint that Nissan white. Just that, just that. Do it, dude. Yeah, dude. They're so old and ratty looking. <laughs> That's it. We're done. We're done. Wait, look at this. This is a rare occurrence, guys. Dude, I got my hands dirty. <laughs> what? I get to be behind the camera for once, so oh. expect this video to be shaky and there to be a lot of breathing noise. <laughs> but that's it. I'm going to eat dinner. That's it. See y'all later. Bye, guys.